I've got my own medium that would, that is going to get the our side of the story out there in a big way, the correct way. I'm not interested in in the same way that I would not hang out on bigger pockets owned by another company with people who threaten violence against their own terms of service. I I have my own media. I don't work at bigger pockets. I literally have no idea what you're saying. My experience was actually horrible. Um, it started out very smooth as far as uh, uh, talking to his team, uh, you know, getting them to answer any questions I had. Uh, basically, the money transaction was smooth. Uh, communication was, was pretty good in, in the beginning. Uh, but from that point on, um, uh, the first house went fine. Uh, then I purchased two more properties from them. And then uh, three months later is when uh, everything went down. Can you go into detail on exactly what started to go downhill? Sure. So I, I purchased my first property uh, sometime in, uh, I believe, November of 2016. Uh, I'm sorry, 2017, November. And it got rehabbed. Uh, they put a tenant in there. I started collecting rent, uh, and uh, I purchased two more properties uh, in uh, March or February, sometime in February 20, uh, 2018. And then uh, I I received a strange email from uh, from his team, uh, where you know 200, 300 people were copied on that email, and uh, that caught my attention. So I I, I read the email. Uh, it says something along the lines of uh, uh, they're closing up shop. Uh, I can't remember the details of the email, but there were about, like I said, two, two to three hundred people uh, uh, copied on that email. And some emails started flying back and forth between. Uh, I later found out those were investors with uh, Clayton Morris. Um, you know, one person sent an email, a group email, uh, asking if anybody's received rent for the month of March. And Somebody else responded and said, well, I haven't received any rent. Uh, this was sometime in mid-March. They said, I haven't received any rent. They told me that the tenant defaulted. And then a, another email came and another email with the same exact uh, uh, reasons, uh, you know, tenant defaulted. And so uh, uh, at, at that point, uh, you know, the first red flag went on. <laughs> and uh, I hadn't received my March uh, rent either. And so, um, you know, when I called, I couldn't reach anybody. I couldn't reach their team. I couldn't reach the office. Uh, you know, the phone would ring, but nobody would answer. And so, uh, you know, by then it was, uh, I believe a few days later, uh, I received an email saying that my tenant defaulted. Um, uh, and, and so at that point, you know, uh, like I said, the suspicion grew. Uh, then more emails came came in where investors, some of them that were suspicious, uh, flew out to uh, to Indiana, uh, found out that uh, there was no house. Uh, either there's no house, or <laughs> the houses were um, in uh, they're not in a livable condition. They were a complete uh, disaster. There was no rehab done. Uh, none of that stuff. And at that point, I decided uh, I decided to fly out to Indiana. Now, when my first house was rehabbed, I had hired a, a local agent there to do a walkthrough, uh, you know, take pictures, uh, FaceTime. And so I was okay with the first house. You know, it looked, it looked like it was in good condition. Uh, the second and third homes, now they were in the middle of a rehab, so I had no idea what condition they were in at that point. I wasn't even sure if, if there were any houses. Okay. So I decided, I decided to, to see for myself, uh, basically uh, booked a ticket, uh, fly, flew out to Indiana, and uh, the, the way Clayton Morris sold this idea was he had a whole team behind him. Now, he was the only face of the company. I only knew of Clayton Morris, and I pretty much – uh, invested with him. Uh, his team, he, uh, what he claimed was he had a team of um, rehabbers. Then once they were finished rehabbing, they would just turn it over to a, uh, uh, a property management company, which was, at that point, you know, 
I had no idea it was a, 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 like an outsourced company. I thought it was part of the Clayton Morris team. And so, and why did uh, you, why did you feel like it was part of the Clayton Morris team? What specifically made you feel that you would be dealing with Clayton Morris and his direct employees the entire time? All of his YouTube videos. That's exactly how he sold it. Okay. So it wasn't, it wasn't a third party property management company that he just turned it over. It wasn't any of that. Everything that he said was my team, my team, my team. And okay. so, <clears throat> um, and at that point, like I said, so when the suspicion grew, I just decided to uh, basically look for another reputable uh, property management company. And, and, I, and at that point, the emails, I mean, we were just going back. There was a bunch of emails that were going back and forth between, uh, you know, these investors. And these and so are all the other investors uh, in March of 2018 that were all CC'd on this large email chain. Correct. Okay. Correct. So, like I said, some of them just saw land when they went out to Indiana. All they saw was land at the address that they were provided. So there was no house. But you know, some of them had collected rent. So we suspected that you know the what they did was just collect you know forty or fifty thousand uh, dollars, claiming that they were going to you know build it or rehab a house, and you know they paid everybody maybe a couple or three months worth of rent and said, hey, your tenant defaulted. So. I went out to Indiana, saw for myself, uh, they were not in neighborhoods that uh, Clay the Morris claimed they were in. Uh, these are D-class neighborhoods, you know, horrible, horrible uh, neighborhoods. And did you have a conversation with Clayton Morris and or his sales representatives at his company about the types of neighborhoods you were buying into? Like, was that a conversation? Did you discuss the types of neighborhoods prior to making your purchases? I did not, ha I did not ask those specific questions, but uh, he had a, a YouTube video where he shows uh, the type of neighborhoods that the he buys in. Okay. And uh, I believe somebody, uh, somebody, I, I may have it, but somebody, some of the, those investors have that video. Um, and I've seen that video for myself and it, he advertised it to be in B class neighborhoods. Uh, he specifically says that these are hardworking, you know, nurses and, and post office workers that, that lived in these neighborhoods. Um, uh, now from the video, you can see the neighborhoods were, were really nice, uh, you know, they were in A-class neighborhoods, but they were really decent neighborhoods. Um, he even did a walkthrough of the type of rehabs that his team performs. And uh, when you look at those rehabs, I mean, they were in excellent condition, at least in the video. That's, that's exactly how he advertised it. So then when you actually physically showed up there in Indiana, what was the reality like versus what you were shown in that video? Um, so it was, it was day and night, uh, but I was still relieved to, I guess, relatively happy because the, uh, the houses were, um, you can tell they were rehab, but not completely. They were not completely done. So it wasn't just uh, like a skeleton or, or like some, some people claimed it was just land. There were actual properties that some work has been done, but uh, additional, I, I spent an additional, I believe uh, 12 to 13,000 in, in rehab. Did you then contact Morris Invest about the fact that what you had purchased was different than what you thought you had purchased? How was that experience like for you when you tried to reach out to them about this? Uh, so when I tried to reach out, uh, it was at that point, they have our, they had already sent an email, the mass email saying that they were closing up shop. And so, uh, I couldn't reach anybody, any of those numbers that were provided. Um, there was just no answer. Um, somebody in that group emails, uh, actually provided Clayton Morris's cell phone email saying that they were able to, to reach him. But, and I called that cell phone number, sent a text, I, I sent him an email, uh, and, uh, but there was, there was no response. So I figured at that point, he was overwhelmed with phone calls from, you know, upset investors. And I figured that I was not going to get a, a phone call. 
So I took matters into my own hands. I said, okay, I'll rehab these properties. I'll spend whatever extra amount and then try to, to recoup my money through, through rent. In totality, how much money do you th- estimate that you have lost in your experience working with Clayton Morris and Morris Invest? So I, first property was 45,000 and then the next two properties were just under 50,000 each. When it was all said and done, just to maintain, maintaining the, those properties, like I said, they were in D-class neighborhoods. So I had squatters uh, in one of them that ran up uh, $4,000 in water bill because you know, one of the pipes broke. Um, uh, just, just maintaining them was $20,000 over a course of a year. Um, and, uh, I finally just got tired of them and, and sold all of them for, for a discount and ended up losing a total of, uh, $73,000. If you could talk to Clayton Morris today about your $73,000 loss, if he was sitting across the hall from you or across the aisle, what would you say to him? Man, uh, in all honesty, um, in those email exchanges, uh, there are people that have lost as much as seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars. And this was a, a lady that pretty much invested all her retirement with Clayton Morris. That I have actually personally talked to since then. Uh, there are people that have lost a couple hundred thousand dollars. Uh, I feel bad for them more than I feel bad for myself, mainly because I'm young. I'm I'm a lot younger than they are, and they don't have time to recoup their money. For me, it was a loss, $73,000 money that I worked hard for, but I still have time to, you know, to make it up and, and retire it with dignity. But not a lot of people can say that. And so I would ask him why, specifically for those people, more so, for, uh, more so than for myself. Where were you when the news came out that Clayton Morris had left the United States of America and had fled with his family to Portugal? Uh, I was, I live in Austin, so I was in Austin at the time. Uh, I learned it through, uh, through the email chain. Uh, we still have that email chain, chain to this day. We exchange, uh, you know, other information. Um, so I'm still in that email chain and I learned it from one of the people that sent the link on the news and, and I just read it. I read what it. What was there. your reaction when that news came about? Uh, I would, honestly, I wasn't surprised at all. Uh, because there were talks of him putting his, his, uh, his house up for sale in New Jersey. Somebody sent an email saying uh, his house was up for sale, and I think it was a $1.2 million house, some, something along those lines. And so I kind of expected him to, uh, to basically uh, disappear. When I saw that email, I knew that the next step was he was either going to run for, for Canada or somewhere out of, out of the country, so it wasn't a surprise. Do you believe that the investors involved in the multiple lawsuits against Clayton Morris are ever going to stand a chance at getting any type of repayment of monies lost now that him and his family are outside of America? I honestly don't. I, I, I was actually in one of those lawsuits and I, uh, I just dropped out because uh, one, I mean, the lawsuit takes forever to just to get information, to gather information. But two, um, I honestly don't think there's any money left. So, and that's, that's the reason I, I just dropped out of the lawsuit. Now, Clayton has maintained throughout this entire process, Clayton has never denied that real estate investors were harmed and he's never denied that a lot of money was lost. He has copped to both of those, but his defense has always been that he was a victim right along with you investors and that Burt Whalen and Burt Whalen's company Ocean Point defrauded Clayton Morris and Morris Invest right along with you folks. What is your opinion on his defense? Do you think that's a valid excuse? I don't think so because we, no, none of us learned of Burt Whalen until the, all this fiasco. I haven't heard of Burt Whalen. I haven't heard of 80% anybody other than Clayton Morris. So the, uh, the company Morris Invest, I literally only invested in Clayton Morris and, and basically the way he marketed his company. 
I don't know who Bert Molin is. My relationship or my deal was not with Bert Molin. It was with, with Clayton Moore specifically. So this is just more, uh, this is just Clayton playing victim. This is, I mean, you know, uh, no, de no defrauder is going to say, hey, uh, yes, I defrauded all those people. The main reason I came to, I, I, I chose to come on is to make sure that another person does not fall victim. Clayton Morris is extremely convincing. I mean, he, he can sell you anything. And so uh, just don't fall victim the way we all did. Like, we, I have no reason to bash anybody's name that's trying to do business or trying to feed their families if they were doing it honestly. If, you know, I, I invest in the stock market. I make money and I lose money all the time. This is not, you know, this is not anything new. I understand the, uh, I understand the, uh, uh, the risks and in investments. So this is not a bad deal that I made and, and that I'm, I'm, I'm angry about. You know, this is a clear scam that I'm trying to help other people prevent. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.